All right, so here we're looking at the chromatography. Now this is what I was really excited about with this ink. It is purple. There's a little bit of light blue at the bottom and a little bit of sort of dark, dark purple way at the top. And unfortunately, I didn't see a lot of this purple in the writing samples. Here I am trying to drop some big blobs onto a Tomoe River paper, and I guess I didn't splash the drops enough because I didn't see a lot of variation in the ink as it dried. Uh, you kind of get a dark, dark gray with a little bit of purple in the dried ink, as you can see here. So Ted is inspecting it as well. So not a lot of variation. Now I got this Diamine Earl Grey ink uh, because I really wanted to have something safe for my fountain pen, which is a vintage flex. All right, so the Diamine Earl Grey was actually voted on by the Reddit fountain pen community, which is pretty cool. So it was a community collaboration between Reddit and the Diamine company. So I thought, okay, well, if a bunch of fountain pen nerds voted on it, it must be amazing. Now it is a nice medium gray. I won't, I won't say anything bad about its grayness, but I just got an impression from all of the videos online and a lot of the pictures that I saw on reviews that it was a lot more purple. So I'm trying to write with different pens. Here I'm using a Delike Alpha, which has a Fude or Bent nib to see how that changes the appearance of the ink. It was a nice medium gray. Now I did notice in some lights that it would get hints of purple, especially it was on a very yellow paper. And when the Earl Grey is next to the Sailor Gentle Grenade ink, for example, it does look a little more purple, perhaps from reflection. So here you can see I just drew a little doodle to see how it shades. And I'm doing this test on the Crown Mill paper, so you can see it, it behaves a little bit differently. A longer writing sample shows a pretty consistent amount of shading. It looks very elegant. Um, it's a nice gray, but it wasn't as dramatic as I thought. Now here you can see it's next to the Haha ha ink, which I thought they would actually be quite similar <laughs> when I was looking at reviews online. So this just goes to show you can't always trust that your calibration for your computer screen or your phone screen is going to match the calibration that people use for their videos or reviews. Um, and you, you know, any kind of color calibration, even with yarn, when I'm buying yarn, I, I have this issue where you can't just trust the screen. You have to see it in a lot of natural light as well, and next to other things. So like I said earlier, this will look a little a little bit more purpley if you have it next to a dark red ink and if it's on a yellow paper. This quote is by one of my favorite bands, Two Door Cinema Club, and I thought it was a, an appropriate quote for a gray ink. I'm still getting the hang of this calligraphy nib. It's a dip nib. Dip nibs are not necessarily meant for fountain pen ink and uh, I'm still working on it. All right, so here I finally put it in the flex nib. I was really worried if you put ink that is too alkaline into vintage pens that use a natural rubber sack as their filling mechanism, it can deteriorate the rubber sack. Um, now, it is very possible to replace that rubber sack with a modern one, so you don't have to worry about this quite as much. But I um, have not gotten to that stage of my pen nerdiness development. I have not started fixing and repairing my own pens quite yet. So for now, I just wanted to make sure I was using something safe. And you can see here that there's not a crazy amount of shading. It's not hugely dramatic but it is a nice medium gray. And it does look very elegant when on like a crown mill paper, something that's a little fancier, a little creamier colored. So it does have a great purpose for that. And one thing I like about my flex nib is that even when I'm not actively flexing it, you get a lot of line variation. So you see these nice sort of squashed rounded letters. 
which I think is pretty nice. Now, like I said, it does have a bit of purple in the chromatography and of course in some lights. So I decided to try to draw a lavender here, which can sometimes look gray and sometimes look purple. I thought it was appropriate. All right, so for the real drawing test, I decided to pop it into my Muji pen. Now, the Muji is really reliable, nice, fine lines, and the Muji pens are fairly affordable. So if you haven't tried it and you are interested in a narrow pen, I would definitely recommend this one. I had to add a converter from Faber-Castell because the other converters I had were just a little bit too wide but it worked out fine once I got the right converter in. Now here I'm drawing a mythical fairy-like creature. I'm trying to imagine what the blood vessels would look like or the energy streams going through the arm. And you can see from the hair that there is a little bit of shading, uh, especially when you get a lot of close lines together, but for the most part, it's a very even tone. Now here for the wings, I kind of always had this idea of fairies, if they were to exist, would exist in a world where their wings were sort of bony protrusions with sort of fleshy, stretched tendons between them. So that's what I'm trying to draw here. I'm not using reference photos or anything, it's just all for my imagination. But you can see the, the shading is fairly regular, and I'm just adding a Nice little leafy fairy outfit. One thing I do like about this ink is that it's really great for drawing. It's not too black. It's inviting. It's, it's almost like I'm ready to color in the picture afterwards. So it creates a, a good medium tone. So if you're interested in doodling, Earl Grey might be a good drawing color. Now it is water soluble, so don't use this for a drawing that you're then going to put watercolor on. <laughs> you'll have a you'll have a mess. But for you know color pencil or something, it would work great. Now if you've also got a sort of alternative fairy tale creature in your mind, or always imagined fairies to be a little more dark than they are in traditional fairy tales, please let me know in the comments. I'm really curious. All right, so it didn't have as much purple as the chromatography promised, but overall it was still a good ink and I like it for what it is. It isn't what I expected, but it is a good medium gray. Thanks for joining me and see you next time.